Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 10.1.3.4 Configuring OSPF Advanced Features. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Scaling Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now in this Packet Tracer Assignment we are continuing to fine-tune our OSPF configurations uh, with some of the hello intervals and dead intervals like the wait time that uh, I, that OSPF does to try to figure out if their their respective links for the directly attached networks are still active. Remember, OSPF tries to keep track of that so that it you know has a a, a map of the whole entire um, OSPF topology. Okay, all the routers and networks participating. So first, we're going to go into interface S001 on R1. All right, we're going to do IP OSPF hello interval 15. Now, that changes the hello timer to 15. Okay. Then we'll do IP OSPF dead interval 60. That's how much time that it's going to wait for that to occur. Sorry about that. So that's how long it's going to wait um, to, to hear a response. Okay. It says after a short period of time, the OSPF connection with R2 will fail. Both sides of the connection have to have the same timers in order for the adjacency to be maintained. Okay. So if we fast forward time here, all right, R1 and R2 are going to lose connectivity. You see it says neighbor down, okay, expired dead timer. So they, they're kind of misfiring right now, right? So we need to go to R2 and configure the exact same thing. Now that interface on R2 that's connected to R1 is also S000, but you always want to double check. Interface S000. All right, and we want to use the exact same ones. IP OSPF hello interval was 15. IP OSPF dead interval was 60. And I'm just using the tab key there to help uh, make that process go a little bit faster. If we fast forward time again, you see, again, my neighbor came back up. Okay, you could also just wait, but I just like the fast forward time button to go ahead and get it in there. All right, and you see it says done there as well. It reformed my adjacency for me okay now again depending on how big or small your network is those timers uh, may be more important um, you know in in larger networks okay uh, step three the last one there is adjust the bandwidth setting on R1 okay so on interface uh, S000 again we're going to do bandwidth 64 and hit enter okay now before if you would have noticed the path from PC1 to the web server would have been routed through R2 now again remember the shortest path first okay so this would have been the preferred route now if I set this bandwidth to this link right here to 64 that drastically takes down, if you think about it, it's in kilobits per second. So 64 kilobits per second is almost dial-up, right? 56 kilobits per second is uh, dial-up. So it's just a little bit faster. Now, what does that mean? That's very slow. Remember, OSPF takes into account bandwidth when it runs its shortest path first algorithm and link state. So now when we can contact web server this is not so desirable a route because there are multiple ways so it could go up here and over or it could go down here and over avoiding this link altogether each one is assigned a cost remember the lower the cost the better so this now has a higher cost because of this link here was reduced to only 64 kilobits per second this is now the preferable path and if you do a in um, simulation mode if you, well, can't get it to go over. But if we trace it from uh, any of them, let's say PC1 to the web server, and you fast forward it, 
each time you'll see the packet choice. Now, for, of course, first it has to do some other stuff. And you see that packet just got sent over to R3 instead. Okay, and you notice it still has R1 there. That's the purple. Then it's sent up to R2, and then it's going to be sent over. Okay, so again, you see that it takes that path now. We also got 25 out of 25 for our lab, so that concludes this lab assignment.